Hello, and welcome to Something Rhymes with Purple. This is a podcast all about words and language, and it's hosted by the beautiful and brilliant Susie Dent and by me, I'm Giles Brandreth. Hello, did you see me gesticulating wildly then? I wasn't sure what you were doing. You were very loud in my ear, but my hand gestures are slightly notoriously bad, so our producers had no clue what I was doing. On Countdown, I'm routinely teased for my terrible hand gestures or my inadvertent ones, like sort of circulating my nipples with my fingers when oh. areoli comes up. Oh, Lord. Anyway, I wasn't doing that. It can be unfortunate. There was the fellow who stuck a... did a V-sign at the traffic policeman <laughs> because he thought the traffic policeman was giving him a most unfortunate sign with his fingers oh. of a kind of... Well, can I say it so early in the podcast? Masturbatory nature. Mm -hmm. And so the driver gave him a, a one-finger or two-finger salute back. It turned out that what the policeman was trying to indicate to the driver was put on your seatbelt. Oh. You see, with the two fingers going up yeah, and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. O open to misinterpretation. So many things open to misinterpretation. Anyway, gesticulating over. Can, gesticulation you, I've turned you down. over. We are here. We are in good heart because we're not in your kitchen today, but mm. we're locked in a studio in London, locked away from the general election. This is going to be a general election free zone. I am trying to get away from it. I'm almost prepared to go under anaesthetic to get away from it. And when I thought that to myself, I thought, ooh, is anaesthesia a modern word? What does it mean? Where does it come from? Uh, it's not a uh, modern word, uh, particularly. It's been with us for uh, quite a long time, and it goes back to the Greek, meaning without feeling. So have you heard of paresthesia? Paresthesia? Yes. Sort of. Is that as in paracetamol? Same start? Mm, so, uh, same, yes, yeah, same prefix. Okay. But the prefix can mean so many different things, to be honest. But it means a kind of altered feeling. So um, it's, it's a sort of strange sensation. So even if you have the obdormition of a limb, in other words, if your limb goes to sleep and you get that sort of pins and needles feeling, and that's a kind of paresthesia. I think. Give me the obdormission. We're losing listeners already. It's so complicated <laughs> so soon. Obdormission. Obdor is, what's obdormission? That's when uh, something falls asleep. Oh, dormy, as yes. in sleeping. Exactly. Ob as in dormouse. Obdormission of the leg, yes. leg going to sleep. Yes. And that is a kind of para paresthesia. Paresthesia, yes. an altered state. Yes. Well, I'm not so much in an altered state by the general election as dozing off <laughs> during it to be candid yeah. with you. I mean, my only excitement is that my daughter is one of the candidates, so I'm focusing on her. Seriously? Well done, her. Yes, we need good people. We need... My view is we need totally new people. I think anybody who stood before shouldn't be allowed to stand this time. And we should just have people like my daughter. That's and very you, impressive. You've never stood for Parliament. Uh, no, and I never will. You never will? That's no, a promise? That's a promise. Oh, you heard it here first. <laughs> now, speaking of anaesthesia, can we talk about health and medicine? Because yes. I, I haven't said to you today, how are you? Are you well? I am well, thank you. You haven't had the lurgy? That's, a lot of people no. have had a tummy lurgy and a cold lurgy. I haven't had any of it. I'm having my flu jabs this afternoon. Oh, you're not old enough to have flu jabs. I oh, know, no, but you can you can get them for ten pounds or whatever. Yeah, I think it, yeah, definitely worth I'm it. I'm old enough to get them free. Aha! Uh -huh. Shall I tell you where influenza yes. comes from? Oh yes. Just to, just to interrupt, um, influenza is from the Italian meaning of flowing in because it was thought to be the result of bad vapors. So a bit like malaria, which means bad air, which was thought to be caused again by um, by horrible odors. In fact, I can't remember which king it was, but when. Uh, influenza and malaria and all sorts of things started to, to hit the streets of London, probably not malaria. Um, he ordered all the sort of stinking rubbish to be cleared. This was back in the sort of 17th century, 18th century, I think. So it was thought to be caused by um, by bad vapours, not by mosquitoes in terms of bad. malaria. They used to come. They used to blame certain countries. I remember as a child having something called Spanish flu. Yeah, there are lots of them. But we always blame other other countries. When it comes to syphilis, every nation has blamed the other one, from Neapolitan bone ache to the French disease to the English pox, you name it. Oh. Sorry to get on to syphilis so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, that's one of the reasons why, if you asked me how I was, I wouldn't tell you. Not that I've, oh. got, not that I've got syphilis, <laughs> but that I don't, on the whole... I think I was brought up not to, you know, uh, if people say, how are you? The answer is, I'm fine. Mm. How are you? And then yeah. you say, I'm fine. And then we move on. It's funny. So you stick to the kind of Australian, how are you? And then just I'm whoever's on. asked you is walked Well, also, it's a, it's a slightly older generation stiff upper lip thing. Yes. A new worry has come upon me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have any older listeners who will share this feeling. Uh, and my wife and I have been together now for more than 50 years. And I've started waking up in the morning thinking... One of us is going to die first. 
Oh, dear. And isn't that going to be bleak? And if she goes first, I'm in trouble. But she seems to be healthy. But, of course, I don't know, because we're that generation that I say, how are you? She says, I'm fine. She says, how are you? I'm fine. And both of us have got lurgy. We're <laughs> ill. We're... Anyway, I shall go and get my flu jab this afternoon. Do. Thank come God. with me. Come, come with I me will come with you. It. I want to come with you now into the world of medical phrases, medical language. Yes. Well, one thing your lovely wife, I could definitely not accuse her of being, is hysterical ever, and certainly not hysterical about mortality and things. So I thought I'd start with hysterical because it's a very sexist term, um, oh. and it goes back to the Greek hysteros, meaning a womb, and the idea is that whenever a woman, it was only women who became hysterical, whenever they became hysterical, it was due to a disorder of the womb that would be floating around untethered in the body. That's where we get hysterectomy from as well, the same idea, and of course something that is hysterically uh, funny, that I'm so funny that now either sex can be sort of, you know slightly gargle with hilarity um, but they're all connected so it was, yeah, hysterical and hysterectomy uh, strangely connected. And another strange couplet, um, and a slightly sinister one I think, is um, faint and feign, as in to sort of pretend F-E-I-G-N, because quite often it was thought that women were feigning fainting in order to uh, gain attention and get the smelling salts out and just sort of, you know, basically have men um, crowded around her while she swooned. So the origin of the word hysteria, it's the same as your... Hysteria, your womb, hysterectomy, linked to hysterectomy. It's linked to hysterectomy. Yes, have you ever wondered what the X is in an X-ray? No, it was invented by somebody called Ronion, like in uh, Ron, Rontgen. Uh, Rontgen, yes, with right? Rontgen. Yeah. Uh, yes, because and and actually, that's one of the um, official names for uh, an X-ray. Is a but Rontgen. A Rontgen. I'm, ha- I'm having a Rontgen, and a Rontgen. I think there's an umlaut on the O. There is. Oh, you can spell it R O E N T G. Can we apologise to people who are listening in saying now they're doing cod German accents? They mention somebody Rontgen, and mm. they both put. We do not. We do not stereotype people by their accents. We apologise. No, no, that is that. honestly, withdraw. it is Rontgen. And because I am a Germanist, so that oh, is, good. it well, is Rundgren. Good. I promise, I wasn't, I wasn't taking the Mickey. German, as I've said so often, it's the most beautiful language in the world, Very good. apart from English. Um, well, it, it actually the X goes all the way, way back to um, René Descartes, Descartes, who oh. was the French uh, philosopher and mathematician from the 17th century. And one of the things he contributed to the world of numbers, one of many things, was the representation of an unknown within an equation using X, Y and Z. Uh And when the aforesaid um, Wilhelm Röntgen discovered what what we now call X-rays, he called them X-Strahlen. Strahlen is German for um, to shine and X course stood for the unknown nature of the radiation that Röntgen had discovered because they didn't know what it was. Um, And even though now we do know what it was, and please don't ask me, we still use that X for the unknown quantity. Wow, the X is the unknown Unknown quantity. The X factor, yeah. And, and that's the same with the X factor. Does that come from X ray? Is that the same it's idea? Exactly the same the thing. Is that the, je ne sais quoi? Is that the je ne sais quoi? Mm. Given things that beginning with H, like hysteria, the Hippocratic Oath is fundamental to mm. doctors. Yes, I don't Where know does... too much about Hippocrates, but Hippocrates was um, was Greek, wasn't he? And he was the one that introduced this fundamental oath, as you say, which is wonderful, that basically you will only ever use medicine to do good. Also, there's a Hippocratic face designating an appearance of the face often seen in a person close to death after severe illness. Oh, good grief. Typically characterised by pinched features with sunken eyes, hollow cheeks and a bluish pallor. Oh, the Hippocratic face. But you can tell, you know, when people are very close to death, the nose becomes more pointy, as well as those other features. Yes, I'm now taking a keen interest in this, can I tell you? I look in the mirror every morning and I I don't want to see a Hippocratic face. What is it again? What, blue features? Pinched features. Pinched features. Hollow cheeks. Hollow cheeks, Sunken eyes. Sunken eyes. But you don't have any of those. I don't have any of those. Should we go on to childbirth? Because that's one of the most glorious... Yes, let us move. Let's swing from the end to the beginning, from death to childbirth. Tell me more. Well, have you ever wondered what a midwife... Why midwife? Maybe not. Did you you have good midwives? I had amazing ones. We had good midwives, and uh, we started having children so long ago that they arrived on bicycles. It was like before (laughs) they had an episode of Meet the Midwife, we were meeting the midwife. Not the children, not the babies. No, no. The midwives. The the babies came brought by a stork. You can explain that to me in a moment. Oh, yes. I had brilliant ones. Uh, But the mid is is Germanic again, because we are essentially a Germanic tongue, aren't we, as I often say. Um, And the mid is related to German mit, meaning with. And the wife was a woman. Uh, so it was the woman who was with you at the birth. Oh. 
And the obstetrician, I love this one. This is from um, the Latin for one who stands opposite. So it's almost as if they're catching the baby. Oh, well, they often are, aren't they? It's great, isn't it? Well, of course, you, one does want to feel that they're properly qualified. They've taken the Hippocratic Oath. They're not some sort of quack. Oh, well, actually, where does quack come from? Yeah, quack's a lovely one. Quack goes back to the Dutch uh, quack salver. And that basically meant a um, a seller of wares. So salver, I mean, we might talk about salves these days um, from, from the Latin for healthy. So um, things that will sort of soothe, ointments that will kind of soothe your skin or whatever malady you have. And these quacks would babble away. They'd sort of set up a, a platform at medieval markets um, and, and actually even before then, even before the Middle Ages, they would step up on the on the platform, hence Mounty Bank, uh, a bank being a platform. So wow. they would step up on there. They would often employ assistants to uh, to sell those salves, the, the quack salvers. Um, and these assistants would often pretend to do ridiculous things, um, including swallowing um, live frogs or toads believed in those days to be highly poisonous the quack would then duly give this assistant one of his magic potions and the toad eater would be cured and so of course then all the people watching would think i need some of this i need some of this wonderful potion and um, those same assistants because they were toad eaters and because they were fawning on their master and, and obeying his every command were toadying up to him that's where that comes from wow yeah these are phrases that have been that have been around for hundreds of hundreds years. Hundreds of years. And they also their their sort of patter was also notorious. And we think that charlatan goes back to an Italian dialect word giallare, which means to, to babble. They prattled away to sell their potions. Incidentally, um a frog in the throat yes. um probably doesn't go go back to that swallowing of live toads, but some people believe that it was another really odd remedy whereby um people who had thrush in the mouth, so thrush candida, but it was um certainly believed we have evidence of this that the secretions made by frogs were actually used as a remedy against thrush. And some people believe, I think it's unlikely, that a frog in your throat goes slightly back to um, to that idea of putting them in, certainly in children's mouths to ease their affliction, but it, it's more likely to be a bit croaky. Um, Can I ask you something else? Yes, and I've mentioned? got to get on to asphyxia. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Just quickly, thrush, yes. as in the medical condition. That's a really good question. And thrush the bird. Yes. And candida. Just unwrap those, unpack those for me okay, for a moment. Okay, so... A candida is the Latin for white. And I think during our political episode, we talked about the fact that candidates are actually ah. linked to candida because the candidates would dress in pristine white togas in order to demonstrate their purity and integrity. And thrush, strangely, yeah. I've just had to look this up in the OED because I actually didn't know whether they were linked to the two things. It's very interesting because it brings us right back to frogs because a thrush is a sibling of frosk, which is Norwegian for a frog. So there you go. Um, so, yes, I'm not quite sure why. I'm going to look into this because I think it might be long. It's a very long entry. Thrush. <laughs> Back to our topic of thrush. Yes, it's just we were talking about thrush in the mouth and frogs in your throat and all that kind of thing. But it reminded me that the bird, the thrush, which has a different root, um, actually weirdly gave us the adjective sturdy because the, uh, the Latin scientific name for the thrush is um, turdus. T-U-R-D-U-S. Thrushes in Roman vineyards who, once they'd fed on uh, fallen grapes, um, uh, which were sort of highly fermented and so um, quite intoxicating, they would totter around and they were, they were said to be sturdy um, in English. And so that adjective sturdy originally meant just all over the shop, uh, like a tipsy thrush. And it was only much, much later over the centuries that it came from all over the place to somebody who was um, perhaps a little clumsy and then because you were clumsy you might be a bit thick set and then that eventually transformed into being sort of you know strong robust strong and robust yeah yes well built exactly so can you believe that might go back to um pissed thrushes that's extraordinary yeah very odd but n enough of that i've got more more asphyxia Asphy <laughs> asphyxia why am i so desperate to get to asphyxiation um well i have to thank dr rohin francis who's a cardiologist who's on twitter do check him out because he does the most wonderful youtube videos about um medicine and in this one he was talking about etymology the etymology of the body and i just loved it um but asphyxia 
in asphyxia. A means without, the same a as in anesthesia. Um, and asphyxia means to throb or beat like a, like a heart. And the suffocation came later. But as Dr. Francis said, soon enough to those unable to answer the riddle of the sphinx. Which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed, then two-footed, then three-footed? And those who couldn't answer the question were strangled. Oh, I remember a different version. Oh, there probably oh. are lots. I would oh, imagine no, there are lots. I've got it. I okay. do, can I tell you what I think the answer is? Yes. Four-footed is when you're a baby, yes. crawling on all fours. Yes. Two-footed is when you're standing up. Very good. Three-footed is when you get a stick Absolutely. to help you walk That's along. brilliant. That's brilliant. But the Sphinx gave us the sphincter, which is the muscle that constricts like a band. It's all linked. Mm -hmm. um, we'll perhaps not go into the sphincter, but of course you have a pyloric sphincter as well. Um, so it's not not just where most of us think about. But pylorus was the the Greek for uh, the gatekeeper. So the pylorus is the gateway to the duodenum part of the intestine. But it's all it's all linked in. So asphyxia is to be without a heartbeat, really, because possibly you have been um, strangled by the sphinx. I know. Um, the other thing that Dr. Francis ta taught me about was diabetes. This is from the Greek diabanin, which means to pass through. And it's so cool because diabetes obviously causes people to wee a lot. Um, so a lot of, of urine know. passes through the body. But there are two types. Diabetes mellitus, which um, involves the word for honey. That melts. If you're mellifluous, you're sort of honey voiced, if you like. Um, and that's because it causes high sugar in the blood, in the urine. And doctors in the past, I had no idea about this, used to diagnose this diabetes mellitus by tasting the sweet urine of those suffering from it. Goodness. Have a sip of your tea. No, people are quite, have been quite keen on drinking urine. Was it, was it Gandhi who oh, drank his own urine? I think it was. I think it was. Before international conferences, everyone else had orange juice and his were a little bit paler. And also the actor or actress who was in Ryan's Daughter. I can't remember her name, but she used to... Oh, Sarah Miles. Sarah Miles. But there's another much rarer kind of diabetes, just to finish this one off, which is called diabetes insipidus. And that means passing through without taste. It goes back to that. Can you imagine Insip being a doctor and diagnosing through taste? Anyway. Gosh. Yeah. One last thing, mm. um, which is... Syrinx. So I'm, I'm talking a lot about Greek mythology because it actually informs so many of our words. Syrinx was um, a goddess who was known for her chastity, but she was relentlessly pursued by Pan. Pan, the mischievous god who, remember, gave us panic because he used to hide in the woods and make all sorts of noises and terrify passers-by. She was fleeing his advances and um, she was a nymph, really, rather than a goddess, and she transformed herself into hollow water reeds that made this beautiful hollow sound um, when Pan's breath blew across them, the Pan pipes. Um, and Pan cut the reeds to make Pan pipes, but Syrinx was now a hollow tube and it's that that gave us the syringe. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? That's very beautiful. Yeah. Well, think, speaking of things beautiful, it gets us to where we have listeners' questions. Oh, yes. And I have a, a listener request that I'm going to fulfil now uh, because it has a, a, a medical uh, connotation, I suppose. Um, I'm a friend of Lucy Siegel. Lucy is one of my fellow reporters on The One Show, mm -hmm. which is brilliant. And she said to me the other day, in your lovely poetry collection of poems to learn by heart, Dancing by the Light of the Moon, she said, I've come across a poem that I think is wonderful, Giles. And you, Giles, in your capacity as my uh, perimenopausal advisor, I didn't know what any of the words meant. Uh, she said, you can perhaps spread the word about this lovely poem. So I'm going to read you this poem and see what you make of it, okay. Susie. It's called Hot and Cold. It's by Roald Dahl. And this is oh. requested by Lucy Siegel. And we, I know we passed International Menopause Day. We're a little bit late. But Lucy says, better late than never. Mm -hmm. A woman, who my mother knows, came in and took off all her clothes. Said I, not being very old, by golly gosh, you must be cold. No, no, she cried, indeed I'm not. I'm feeling devilishly hot. <laughs> anyway, who has written to you this week? Um, I've had um, a lovely email from, he's a countdown view actually, John Lever 
at the Vale of Glamorgan, who asked whether there's a connection between the word cataract, meaning a waterfall, and the same word meaning an eye condition while we're talking about medicine. And the answer is yes, because for the Romans, cataracta could mean a floodgate or a portcullis. So, um, you know, a heavy barrier that's lowered down in front of a gateway. And it's those two Latin meanings that explain the different uses, because the first was a waterfall that tumbles headlong over a precipice. And the second is the clouding of the lens as though a portcullis is descended in front of the eye. So the person's vision is completely obstructed as though there's this, now this gate um, over the lens, which I think is, is quite beautiful. Beautiful and intriguing. Mm. Uh, OK, I have something from Anne Verilli. I hope that's how you pronounce her name. Another great name. What is the derivation of the word hustings? Oh. Um, do you know this one? No, and I said we were going to be election free, but oh, I sorry. think we can no, I think we can legitimately answer that because okay. it's an inquiry that's come in from a, a listener. Uh, well, we have the Vikings to thank for this one because for the Vikings, the Hus thing was a household assembly um, held by a leader. So the Hus was a house, as in Husweef, which also gave us Hussy. Housewife went one way and Hussy went another, but Hussy was originally a housewife, mm. um, which is quite interesting. Anyway, um, and the thing or ting was an assembly or parliament, and Hustings was applied to the highest court of the city of London. Um, when it first came into um, English, presided by the Recorder of London. And then over time, it kind of transferred to a temporary platform on which parliamentary candidates were nominated and then the sense of electoral proceedings that we have today. But I love the fact that that ting, this assembly of the most important people of a community, has actually, all the way down the centuries, has lost its power and lost its power. It's ebbed away. And now that ting is a thing, any old thing. Um, but you know it's strange because the um, the I don't know how to pronounce this, but the National Parliament of Iceland is called the Althingi or something similar. It Althing, is. Althing, I think. It is. It's um, the oldest parliament in the world. It is absolutely founded in nine thirty. Um, I so, went to Reykjavik once. Did you? Is to, it beautiful? To, to visit it, yes. I, st- I was there at Christmas. How do you pronounce it? Do you know? Uh, Althing. I know this. It's Althing. Althing. Yeah. Althing. And I felt very very guilty. Because I stayed at Christmas and I had reindeer steak on Christmas uh, Day. Can you imagine eating a reindeer? Mm. Now, it's time, please, Susie, mm. for your trio of words. Interesting okay. words. OK. My first is something that I do a lot of. It is a word from uh, one of the earliest dictionaries that we have, actually, from Nathan Bailey, um, his Universal Etymological Dictionary from 1773. And the verb is to fisk. F-I-S-K. Yes, it means to run about hastily and heedlessly. Oh, so we'll do that, we're just fisking all the time, not getting anywhere. Yeah, I know the feeling. Oh, uh, do you pick at your food when, you, when you're a bit off colour, possibly? Oh, yes, toy with it, push it around the room. I do, because I am a veggie, mm. and they sometimes I haven't told people. Uh, they, I do a lot of that poking the yes. chicken around the plate to try and make it look smaller. Well, <laughs> uh, well you're pingling. Oh, pingling. Yes, to pingle, is to, to pick at your food. I like that. Sometimes oh. also applied to cats who need your lap. With their claws. Ah, oh, they're Some, Yeah, but... But it's really picking at your strange. food. Strange, picking at your food. Like it, pingling. And I end with one just because it makes me laugh. Um, do you know Bridget Jones's diary? Did you see the films I and saw, read the books? I saw all the films. Okay. I loved all the I didn't see the, the last films. one, I did I saw the last one. She's, she's brilliant. And she I've is. seen Renee Zellweger in Judy about Judy Garland. The yeah. woman is beyond genius is and is going to get an Oscar for that. But that's by the by. Oh, uh, amazing. Bridget Jones's diary. I've well, also, do you remember her I read the first book as well. Yeah, me too. Big knickers, do you remember? Of course. Her big knickers. Well, uh, the word in Hertfordshire and various counties um, in England for at least once upon a time for those big knickers were apple catchers. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Apple catchers. Well, look, it's time to pull our knickers up and get on our way because that's all. But every Tuesday we have a new one, which is quite exciting. And you can go back and listen to all the original ones um, because there are 30 or more uh, piled up wherever you collect your podcasts. You want to get in touch with us, you can can tweet us, uh, you can email us at purple at something else.com. And it's been rather nice, hasn't it? Oh, do please, if you've liked it, um, don't, you know, give us a, a nice review. Recommend us to a friend. Please that do. That would be lovely. And Something Wise with Purple is a Something Else production. It's produced by Lawrence Bassett with additional production from Paul Smith, Steve Ackerman and Gully, who apparently we must photograph. Somebody's clamouring for a photograph of Gully. Because we would if we could tie him down, but he's a prize fisker. His beard's got a bit longer. I think we can grab it and keep him down. Oh, bingle with it.